Hi, everybody. It's Mark Russian of markrushin.com. It is Saturday, May 8th, 2021, and uh, I'm buying a pickup, but I'm not buying a truck. I'm buying an instrument pickup for the new bass clarinet to run through my um, Impress FX boxes. That's right. And so we're going to take a look here at the website where I found this and where I ordered it uh, earlier today. Now, what I had originally thought I did want to use the bass clarinet. The, 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 the reason I got the bass clarinet was to run it through the effects box, uh, uh, boxes. And I thought I might be able to do it with my Bonaro microphones. But I've been having uh, trouble uh, getting that sound out of there, out of the microphone, and into the effects boxes. There seems to be some sort of problem with regard to... Uh, when I apply any kind of adapter to the end of the, the binaurals, which is a one eighth inch and then split it off either um, mono or into, you know, I don't really understand all that sort of stuff, but I got a couple of different adapters and tried it out and neither of them worked. Uh, the, the binaurals work fine. If you plug it directly into like an audio recorder or something like that, they sound, they sound very, very good. Uh, but I think I'm going to end up selling these be and they're really good. These are really good binaural microphones. I just, I don't need them. I just don't need them. And the bass clarinet is not why I bought the binaurals. The binaurals was something extra that I was thinking about doing. And now I've decided not to do it. So moving on from that. And if you know, I don't, I don't want to keep equipment around. So uh, these will go on eBay. I, they didn't cost that much. Uh, sell them for a reasonable price. And somebody can uh, enjoy them, use them. Um, as far as this is concerned, this is what I needed. I needed a wind instrument pickup, and I was a little worried about what the cost was going to be when I started uh, looking into this. And this is a uh, piezo barrel. I'm probably not pr pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it's out of Brisbane, Australia. And let's take a look at some of the stuff here. Uh, it talks about the difference between a pickup and a regular microphone. And yeah, I was, you can mic microphone, uh, stick a microphone on a, on a wood or brass instrument, but I guess it's better to um, pick that sound up in the body of the instrument and of course, closer to the mouthpiece. And so that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna spend a little little bit of my royalty money on on this sort of thing. And so I know it's not exactly like earth-shattering stuff here. Oh, everybody everybody's looking into this. <laughs> I know I'm really it's weird. It's weird stuff I'm buying a bass clarinet at my age and then running it through effects and buying uh, instrument pickups here but uh, this will solve the problem it'll be kind of a, it'll be kind of interesting yeah uh, the piezo barrel pickups are designed to be attached to wind and brass instruments to pick up the relatively high pressure standing wave inside the instrument near the mouthpiece end this has the benefit of allowing the instrument to be amplified without feedback or interference from other sounds outside the instrument which is exactly what I want exactly what I want. And I did not go with the, uh, the, the wood version designed for a regular clarinet. Um, I guess it's a little bit, uh, a darker sound and maybe, maybe I wanted that, but the, I was, I was recommended to do the P7 and we'll take a look at the P7 down here. Yeah. The P piezo barrel P7 is currently recommended for the bass clarinet. And this is also one that works on saxophones too. So the pickup has a brighter sound with more upper par partials than the Piazza Barra would. <laughs> Pardon me for a second. Um, although designed for the saxophone, it works very well for a variety of other instruments, including the bass clarinet. Uh, it's available with a low cost mouthpiece ready to use. And that was the thing I was a little concerned about because the website did not indicate that they had a one for a bass clarinet and this here as you can see here on the on the graphic 
This one is drilled into the top part of the saxophone. Of course, there's a you can put something in there to close that off. But uh, I didn't want to drill into the bass clarinet itself. The mouthpiece, that's fine. And of course, I don't want to drill into the mouthpiece because I I don't have a drill press and I, it just could you do that for me? That'd be I'd buy pay I'll pay pretty much whatever to a certain extent. And uh, and so anyway, I emailed the guy and he got right back to me. I said, yeah, we have two different types of bass clarinet mouthpieces. So I went with the uh, it's a it's the Yamaha uh, mouthpiece, which is probably what it has already in here. So I have two different mouthpieces, one that doesn't have the pickup on it and the other one that has the the hole and the place for the pickup on it. So it'll look, let's see if they get a picture like that. No, they don't, but it's more like the recorder here, right? So they just stick it right in the mouthpiece section there. So that's, that's going to be kind of cool. I do believe kind of fun. And uh, look at that on the trumpet there. <laughs> this is right into the mouthpiece. Just like you look like, like whenever you see, I don't know, it's, for me, it's like whenever you see musicians playing uh, an instrument with a, with a, um, a pickup on it, 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 that's serious. You know, it's like being amplified or going through effects or just going through the board. Um, uh, that's, that's always appealed to me. Like, how do you do that? How do you, well, there's that, people in Australia making that, making this sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, look at all these little things here. And then what is this here? I guess this is something that Pietro Barrow pick up. Scene. Okay. And, you know, I, I watch some of these videos and I'm like, eh, this is not where I'm going. I'm not going to be playing songs traditional songs I'm going to be using it to um, for effects for ambiance for to add sound color to fill in the painting uh, John and I have plans to uh, try to realize his too much bass uh, idea which is uh, him playing bass guitar and me playing process bass clarinet kind of yeah kind of weird and we're not gonna whenever we do something like that it's not gonna be like hey look at this we uh stick a little electronic thing in a bass clarinet no one, it's that's not how you no one cares no one cares about that sort of stuff but if you um make it sound interesting right and sort of have it be within the sort of ambient genre that and electronic processing and stuff like that. That's where I think uh, there may be some interest in that kind of sound. I don't even know what it's going to sound like. I've got my boxes. I know what they can do with uh, my, uh, the apps that I work with. So uh, this is just sort of an extension here. Yeah. They're designed and built in Brisbane, Australia. Simple to use. Just plug it in and it works. That's what I want. Uses international standards for plugs and threads. Avoid the use of batteries and phantom power. High reliability. Compatible with guitar effects pedals. Uh, clean sound with low noise. It must be robust both mechanically and electrically. So, yeah, this is one of the boxes that I'm going to run it into. Which is my Empress Reverb. And, uh, of course, the reason I bought these, this and the uh, the Echo System back there, was because, uh, very simple, plug things in, turn on the button, start messing around with the, the knobs, the no menus, just knobs and colors. And I, find out what, I find out what I like over a period of time and sort of uh, work that one. So that's what I want to do, and and instead of using an uh, an app or uh, something like the lap steel 
to process sound, I'm going to use a reed instrument, one that I played for a few years, many, many years ago. So that's kind of cool. And how, well, so how much does this cost? Not as much as I thought it was going to be. And it's an Australian dollars here. And so I end up getting a pickup, a mouthpiece that's already ready to go, and some cabling, and international shipping, like Australian Express shipping, which apparently is faster than what I thought it was going to be. I, it, it might be here in a week. It, if it's a couple weeks, that's fine. No big deal. But it seemed like it might be here within a week which would be amazing. That would, that would just be nuts. And so and anyway, I ended up paying uh, 259 Australian dollars, which was $218 US, which I thought that, you know, if you just bought a decent microphone and then had to deal with, you know, maybe some sort of a know, pre preamp or some sort of extra mix. I don't know. I don't know exactly what you would need to, to run the mic and phantom power and all that sort of stuff. I was like, I want to avoid all, I want to avoid all that sort of stuff, make it as simple as possible just so I can, uh, uh, have fun with it. Yeah. The plastic barrels and mouthpieces supplied work great. Working are great. If you don't want to drill into your own mouthpiece or instrument and just want to try it out first. Absolutely. I, I don't, it's a nice, the, the bass clarinet's nice. It, um, Needs a little cleaning and polishing, but well, what instrument doesn't? And uh, but functionally, it's it's fine. Sounds good. Uh, I got to work on my embouchure to get into that uh, that you know the upper register, the upper octave on that. But the main and the lower, I'm perfectly okay with. I can hit notes. I'm not squeaking too much. So yeah, that's that's where I am here. That's this was uh, this was kind of a. Just, I mean, in the last couple of weeks here, you know, buying a bass clarinet and then buying a pickup for it. That's, I I usually don't move that fast, but uh, it seems right. And it seems like fun and uh, it, it, it's going to lead to somewhere, right? So creatively, I think, I hope. Yeah, I don't want to have, I don't have too big of a rig here. <laughs> And I want to continue, you know, even though I'm not going to use these Benaro microphones, I'm still going to use my audio recorder and I'm still uh, doing a lot of field recordings. Uh, John and I did some, uh, John, or John and I were together last night doing disc golf and uh, did some, uh, I did some field recording in the woods, although that was a little odd. Because I thought I would get, we were near where a train, trains usually come by about every half an hour or so, and nothing came by. We were there about an hour and a half. Nothing. Not a single train. I don't know what was going on. Must have been an off night. And the other thing was, where I put the recorder, which I thought was a pretty stealthy place, uh, there was one other person playing the course. And they threw it right, and he's just walking. I haven't heard the recording yet, but I... He was walking around in the, right in that area for 15 or 20 minutes. I know he saw. I'm pretty sure he saw it because he was like right behind us. But he was stomping around in there. So I probably got 20 minutes of him stomping around in the woods. And and where's my $30 disc? $50 disc. He was in there for a long. He's in there for like 15 or 20 minutes. I was a little worried. I was a little worried. But, you know, here's the thing. Like John would tell me, you know, I'm pretty new to disc golf, but. John's like, uh, oh, just, everybody's real chill. Everybody's like super chill. And there's, you know, it's not like uh, other sports, right? So I was a little, a little worried, you know, like, well, somebody's going to find something and 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 take it. But the, it, it, I came back to it and it was, it was there. So that's cool. That's nice. To leave stuff alone, especially when it's running. And the light was on, too. But it still was in a stealthy, stealthy place because, well, that's where the birds are, right? And I didn't want to, I'd recorded, I tried to record the uh, train, the train that came by, um, it was like last week or week and a half ago or something like that, a little too close to the train tracks. It was, uh, it kind of overwhelmed the recorder. So uh, been working on that, working on that sort of stuff and uh, editing audio and making playlists and 
doing all that sort of the boring marketing stuff that you need to do as a uh, publishing recording artist, right? I'm a recording artist, not a musician. I have to state that constantly. Oh, you're a musician? No, I'm a recording artist. I mean, you know, if you say I'm a non-musician, then people are just, <laughs> I'm a recording artist. I publish intellectual property. All right, so that's it. <laughs> Enough of my rambling. What else have I got to say? Nothing really. Yeah, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy one of these. I'm gonna buy one of these. That's gonna be. That's weird, but whatever. I'm weird. I'm not weird. But this is a little weird. But that's have fun. Music should be fun, right? All right, that's it for today, Saturday, May eighth, twenty twenty one. It's supposed to rain like crazy later, and so I'll have to record that too. I record every rainstorm because that's what I do. I record some birds and some trains. We'll see. All right. Talk to you later.